and welcome to this special episode of Sandarva at Janata Television. I am Yutsa Bhatrai and today we are in discussion with CH Venkata Chalam, General Secretary of All India Bank Employees Association. And Mr. Venkata Chalam has been actively advocating for rights of workers in banks, insurance and finance unions worldwide. He is also the General Secretary of TUI, BIFU, BFU, Trade Union International, Banks, Insurance and Finance Unions. Welcome to our talk program, sir. It's a privilege having you here. My pleasure too. Thank you, sir. So, uh, Mr. Vekara Chalam, can you explain in brief about the World Trade Union movements to our viewers? Yeah, quite true. You see, particularly after the Industrial Revolution, slowly uh, the workers realized that uh, they need to come mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and then they started the unions but they were all scattered mm -hmm. the, they were not together their immediate uh, uh, i mean anger was against the machine mm -hmm. that machine is taking away my job then they understood that machine had been uh, employed by somebody so their anger was against uh, the employer then slowly they understood that the employer also is being supported by governments. So he was against the government uh, policies. So and then he wanted some rights uh, for uh, safeguarding his jobs, etc. So slowly, slowly uh, this understanding realization has evolved and unions have come to stay. And in the global level, uh, the first global international uh, trade union was uh, World Federation of Trade Unions that was started in 1945. Mm -hmm. And since then, there have been different global unions. Uh, there is now a uh, few more are there. But uh, the foremost international trade union, workers' union, was the World Federation of Trade Unions that was started in Paris 74 years ago. Now its headquarters is in Greece, in Europe. And uh, similarly, in different countries also, slowly, slowly workers have realized that uh, the employers, the managements, those who give them job, they are not taking care of them. And so uh, they have been fighting and unions have come. And today, uh, trade unions are a necessary evil mm -hmm. or an, an in inevitable instrument to safeguard the interest of the workers. Right, so, so it's been almost 74 years since World Federation of Trade Unions was established. Um, how does it express its solidarity with uh, the worldwide trade union movements today? What, what are the major changes in the last 73 years? See, basically, uh, today trade unions are uh, being perceived as an ATM machine to get me more salary uh, like that. But if you look at this, and the workers uh, were uh, more hit when there was war between countries and countries in the C First World War. And there was a very yeah, huge problem. Uh, the people lo lost their lives and workers, uh, they were being deprived and the prices were going up. And so they found that uh, this war is not good, we want peace. When war is there, workers' needs are completely neglected. The whole attention is war. Secondly, the country's resources are also diverted to war. So this was one immediate realization that in addition to my own demands, uh, there must be peace, there should not be war. And in, in fact, there is a reason why 1945, this World Federation of Trade Unions was started. After the Second World War, the workers found everywhere that uh, uh, the people lost their life, very uh, I mean, precious lives, millions of lives were lost and the workers' demands could not succeed because the whole government everywhere, they were more uh, bothered about the war and the uh, country's resources were also more spent on war. And so this is the first thing that workers, they want peace and they are against war. And this is how it happened. Then uh, if, if the government is pursuing a policy which is hostile, uh, then, then they are against that government. Similarly, when they fight against the uh, employers, uh, against uh, reasonable demands, when prices go up, I want more salary, uh, I want after my retirement some decent life, etc. When that is being denied, and they, when they fight, they find that government is also supporting them. So they have been fighting for labor rights. So like that, it's, a, it's an evolution that uh, the workers have so many priorities. Immediately, my salary then my uh, service conditions, I want a decent uh, service condition. 
then they come to realize that uh, their jobs are very important like that then they find that what are the reasons uh, which are not helpful to them which are the policies so they uh, become antagonistic to those policies so like that uh, they evolve and uh, they come into policy confrontation with the governments which are not supporting the workers demands which are supporting the employers so it's a it's a big evolution in the trade union that today uh, in fact that's why trade unions are inseparable from politics because the war is a political issue whether a country should fight with another country it's a political issue but trade union we don't want war we want peace so uh, naturally the workers also feel that i must be having some political view on matters mm -hmm. which are uh, confronting me i must also influence the government uh, if suppose the, the workers can fight and tell the government no please don't pursue uh, this uh, policy of war we want peace so they they slowly understood that politics and their economic demands are inseparable so that is why you find that workers have played a very important role in liberation movements for the freedom of the country it is not their job but they played a very important role so the, the, this is a long story of almost a century that workers uh, the, the, they are in the forefront of fighting for themselves and fighting for the countries uh, the development the prosperity and the concern of the people around them Mr Venkata Chalam uh, when the World Federation of Trade Union was first established its primary objective was to defeat fascism its primary objective was to defeat feudalism but in the present context um, in this era of multinational companies and transnational companies and when the world is captivated by neoliberalism and the ideas of capitalism what do you think are the major challenges for the trade union movements and for the human rights of the workers how do you define this or how do you take this exactly see we need to re revisit the fundamentals number 1 we need democracy not only within the trade union we want a, in every polity in every country we need democratic rights for the people because under fascism as uh, we see this is the first target first casualty the democratic rights are taken away and uh, dictatorship uh, becomes the policy so workers they 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 want democracy and today it has become very very relevant and uh, they they want democracy secondly uh, we we find that there is exploitation mm -hmm. uh, and we uh, understand very easily that this exploitation is because of the greed of the employer to make more profits he is right from his point of view that he is investing money he wants more profit but but it's uh, discriminatory it's also exploitative so he wants a society which is uh, not exploited he wants an exploitation free society that's why we in the wftu we feel that socialism is the solution so in socialism uh, everybody contributes but there is no exploitation so this is another one that they find that uh, these are all our priorities and today that's why it's very challenging over the years these have been guaranteed mostly there is some i mean uh, democratic setup in the world and we find that uh, nobody can really say that i am a dictator nobody can say that i am a fascist they do but, but so the, those issues go to the background and um, the workers economic demands have come to the front so i think this is the time where we have to tell the workers mm -hmm. that it's very important to fight for your economic demand for your jobs for betterment for welfare salary equally it's very very important to have an ideological uh, conviction that's very important that orientation that ultimately what is the objective of the workers I, i need my union i need to fight i want a better living but everything is possible only if there is a system which supports this only if there is a political policy which supports this so this is the time when we have to talk more and more of political orientation ideological orientation which and that makes the workers to understand that this is fascism this is di dictatorship this is undemocratic and this is socialism and which is good which is bad the time has come to educate especially young workers young workers in the new global uh, scenario the money is overtaking the person money is important but money is overtaking everything so we need to tell money is important but your society uh, which is which, uh, which supports Uh, a decent living that's also important workers have to fight for such a society 
that is a very contemporary issue in which we are all addressing ourselves. How to make the uh, workers realize what is the present uh, challenge and what is our task. So, what are the effective tools and what are the effective instruments that would make the young, especially the young generation or the young workers aware about their rights or aware about these ideologies and these philosophies regarding the trade union movement or regarding their own rights? Well, what are the major tools? How yeah. can we make them aware? Yeah, see, number one, uh, we need to give them training. We need to expose them. We need to frequently interact with them. We can't take them for granted. There was a time when uh, the workers were suffering a lot and so they naturally understood that I have to fight. That's my priority. Now things have uh, been better because of the contributions of trade union struggle, labor laws have come, minimum wages have come, payment of uh, wages act have come and uh, pension funds have come. And um, lot, there are a lot of laws even for resolution of my disputes trade union act, industrial uh, disputes, industrial resolution, all types of machinery have come. So, this will have to be told to them. How these have been achieved? Only by struggle. So, number one, we have to talk to them that you preserve all these things. Mm -hmm. These are the method by which we are today managing. So, kindly take care of that. Number two, how to further improve. So, these constant interaction and in my experience, I find that youngsters are very intelligent because today they are exposed thanks to social media, technology revolution, etc. They are much more informed, they are more qualified and uh, they have exposure to the uh, realities. Only thing we have to connect them, they have, we have to connect them to the ground realities and with all this why these are happening and once we find that we are able to connect it, they are the best cadres to defend trade unions, they are the best fighters for trade unions. And uh, uh, this is the important thing. So, the unions have to find uh, the time both to address the present challenges as well as to prepare the young people to be cadres uh, in taking the trade and movement to uh, new heights in the days to come, to win uh, more rights and to protect the uh, interest of the working class. Uh, how can we make this a young generation technology friendly? Do you think it's going to be more helpful in the trade union movement if we include or if we if we enhance our young generation and technology together? Quite true. Technology cannot be avoided because science uh, it will go on. So, how I understand and how I go travel along with science and technology, mm. that's very important. Uh, and it's changing minute to minute. And the young people are quite comfortable with technology. So, we have to innovate in trade unions uh, the methodology of linking, uh, I mean, our old methods with the new type of thing where we have to reach the people. It is very helpful, but we must be very careful because social, uh, this technology and social media, it has a negative uh, consequences also. So, we must use it, but we should try to make it a positive tool in uh, under networking, this is very important. We talk of workers of the world unite, but uh, we do not know even the workers in the next factory. What are his problems? We do not know in the next province what is going on. I, I, I am from India. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do not think that all my Indian workers know what is the condition of the workers in Nepal, even though we are neighbors and we are so friendly. So, what to talk of workers of the world unite, but this social networking helps and so, there is a big possibility for the workers in different countries to understand, uh, share their experiences and maybe uh, if we really, uh, I mean, uh, train them properly, uh, the concept of uniting the workers across the globe is a definite possibility. That, that way, uh, they are better placed than the previous generation. So, uh, how can we uh, bring the young generation and the old generation together while working for the trade union movements. Um, the old generation might have a different idea because they might have been grown up in different society during war and the new generation, they have been growing up with technology. So, how can we amalgamate their ideas to uh, perform better, for trade union movements to perform better? Yeah, so it's a, it's a big challenge that's what we are facing uh, because the, con the perception is different. Their perception, their background, they came, as you said, from a war background. So, they are, they are uh, very sensitive to a war and they are so committed to peace. Whereas, the new generation and the peace is taken for granted. So, that is why blending 
in the leadership also there must be a proper blend of the experienced people and also uh, the young people uh, and once we have seen young people once they understand then they are the best so this is the challenge before the senior people who are built up they have sacrificed at hard time they have uh, given their life everything and they built up the unions so how to transition we have to transmit the uh, uh, ideology we have to transition the leadership and we we must go forward and it, this is a very big challenge for the senior people who are in the leadership in the trade union movement everywhere it's a very important task for them uh mr venkata chalam let's be a little more context uh, specific now as you mentioned earlier technology and digitalization do have an adverse impact on the trade union movement what are the negative impacts of technology and digitalization in banking or financial sectors how is it being affected how are the banks and financial sectors being affected by uh, the excessive use of technology and digitalization see banking is a service oriented industry banks are meant for the people uh, to keep their uh, savings in the bank or uh, to utilize the services or to maybe even to take loans when they need this is ultimately banking business so there the personal interaction is very important but technology is definitely important because the banking uh, transactions have just like they expanded uh, in a huge way so we can't be in the old manual system it's definitely important that digitalization must come technology must come but two things must be kept in mind while bringing technology in the banking services number one the benefit of technology must go to the uh, the, the the consumer the people number two it should not adversely affect or impact on the jobs of the people these two things are very important if they are taken care then technology will be a successful story but by and large now we find technology is coming only uh, from the accounting uh, point of view of the banks mm -hmm. that across the globe i have banking business across the country i have banking business i want to have i'm um, an easy accounting that something happens somewhere immediately i will come to know so it is more an accounting uh, i mean a requirement that is being met Uh, and rather than service so the technology must become more service oriented how the consumer is benefited if that can be really taken care and number two technology will definitely replace people but but that's very important in growing economies where the educated youth they need jobs and banking job is a good job decent job so if we can take care of these two aspects i think there is no issue uh, technology can go on and technology cannot be prevented but how to harness technology uh, to the benefit of the consumers and uh, not adversely impacting the jobs of the workers they will also naturally cooperate everybody will welcome technology they, they, this is possible what are the other other major threats and challenges uh, that is currently looming upon the banking and financial institution what are the other major challenges that needs to be tackled immediately we need to come up with a solution see in, uh, in, across the world we find in many countries that uh, banks were earlier totally a commercial activity that that was the beginning that i i uh, mobilize the savings and the deposits of the people and i give loan so that's a business like any other uh, uh, business activity but slowly uh, many governments realize that it's very important to keep the banks in the government control or in the public domain because it's uh, very important to regulate them because it was the experience that these people uh, they take the money of the people and they misuse it or abuse it and the people were losing money so this was number one so slowly uh, in many countries uh, the banking became a government subject it became a government company public sector company uh, types of things and today we are finding because of the uh, the urge for more globalization not more than not only globalization liberalization they say why government should do this business it is not their business so you privatize the bank so this is one thing uh, which is very important and there is a myth that private banking or private sector banking is more efficient because there is always a stigma attached to government banking they are bureaucratic they are rule bound services uh, not good etc Uh, so this one thing will have to be answered properly 
that if government banks and government banking service is not up to the expectation of the people, then this will come. So this is a very important from the union point of view, from the employee point of view. That if I want a, a, a public sector banking to continue, then I must uh, really uh, take care of the service to the people so that they also feel satisfied. Yes, government banking, number one. Number two, uh, banking in a developed economy is one thing. Banking in a developing economy is one thing. In a developing economy, to boost the economy, to develop the economy, banks have a very important role to play. Uh, and so naturally, uh, the government um, or the central bank of the country must have uh, some regulation how uh, this bank should cater to the needs of economic development. So there, naturally, it has to be a government control company, a government control uh, bank. And that is also very, very, very important. Uh, so long as the government, they are still developing, this is also very, very important. If it is going to be private, then naturally, they, the, you, you can't blame the private banker because he is meant uh, uh, to be greedy. To be profit oriented, he has invested money. Yeah. So naturally, what's profit? Nothing wrong. But the country's priority is different. So this is another one. So that's why it's a context. If banking has a social role, then naturally this is a very important challenge. But we are finding slowly under uh, the uh, the liberalisation era, there is a big pressure everywhere. That why government should control banks? You give it to private people, they will manage. You don't worry. This one big thing. Secondly, they, they are also, I mean, uh, after this, uh, this privatization, consolidation of banks and uh, cornering, monopolizing the uh, banking uh, business, uh, these, these are all happening. And uh, the jobs are very important. So these are all new things uh, which today we find as a challenge in the banking industry. Uh, jobs, job security, then the orientation of the banks, the ownership. Capital is a very important thing because the banks today all are linked to the international norms, Basel norms. So if I have to give a uh, loan, then it has to be backed up by capital. Suppose I need to give 100 rupees loan, there must be 10 to 12 rupees capital with me. So when economy is growing, when banks have to give more loan, they need more capital. So the governments are today, they are already facing problems of uh, uh, their in the budget deficit financing. So, there is another pressure. So, I, I have no money. So, you better privatize yourself, go to private people, I can't give you capital. So, new types of issues are coming today uh, and especially in the developing economies. In the well-developed economies like America, Germany, Japan, etc., that's completely different. Whereas, in, in the Asian countries or in the developing country, the role of banking is different. Uh, and that is uh, the same role cannot be applied to both. So this differentiation has to be understood and uh, accordingly we are fighting on these issues. Oh, sorry, Mr. Venkatachalam, we are almost out of time. But before that, the Asia-Pacific Regional Conference of World Federation of Trade Union was recently organized in Kathmandu. What are the major takeaways and what will be the next roadmap of World Federation of Trade Unions in the future to tackle with um, the problems of the workers and trade union movement? Please explain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because Asia is a very big theater uh, in experimenting. Uh, and exploitation policies to be implemented, etc. Every Asian country is under this. So that's why uh, we are trying to network our experience, network our uh, struggles everywhere. And so we had a meeting of the Asia Pacific uh, Committee of the World Federation of Trade Unions, uh, about 13 countries, right from uh, Vietnam, Laos, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Iran, Kazakhstan, of course, Nepal, then India. Uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, we all discussed and in this meeting we, we focused on certain things. Number one, the, the social security is a casualty now. Uh, so the social security is under attack everywhere. So that we are telling it's a priority in this area, we must take care of that. And number two, the women. Women workers are a, a, a big number in this area. And, and so naturally, they are working under very uh, difficult uh, environment. So safe jobs, safety for them, decent uh, salary, equal uh, treatment, etc. That is one thing. Third one, youth. 
youth has to be brought into the trade union movement so that we have been talking and we have also decided uh, to further integrate and share our experiences because we found in our today meet that almost the problems are the same almost maybe the the uh, the degree uh, of the challenge has been little different but basic problems have been the same so we found a commonality in the problems a commonality in the challenges and so uh, we decided that that must be a commonality in our resistance uh, in our answer to those uh, challenges also so that was the main focus of this uh, meeting uh, that we held in Kathmandu in Nepal Thank you so much Mr Venkatachalam it was an honor to have you here and it was indeed wonderful to listen to your experiences i hope your stay in nepal was pleasant thank you so much thank you very much with this we come to an end of this very special episode of sandarbha at janata television we will be back again keep watching janata television namaste